I am at uh, Mantor Park and uh, it is the last day of uh, Street Week or uh, yeah, the last race day of Street Week. So let's see what cars have survived th this week. And I think it's several cars I missed to feature on the last video. So yeah, I will go around and check the cars and some racing for today. This Volvo 240, it actually managed to make a four second pass, 498. I think they're checking some valve clearance. So it's the first uh, car without V8 uh, making it a four second pass here at um, Street Week ever. We have the rear axle here. And uh, Goodyear's is going to be mounted. 14 wide, 32 high. Here you see some uh, AN hoses going into the side of the block. This is for um, modified to put in some water all uh, over the block so you don't get any hot spots. Usually all the water is coming from the water pump in the front of the block where this little aluminium block of plate is. Turbo here, also bracket holding the turbo and, uh, and combined with the oil return. That's a smart thing. Some bugs. Turbo, 102 millimeters precision from a turbo. And we have uh, it's an um, LS engine here. Any block is a dark LS steel block. Very impressive build. And now they have some extra air inlets here for the transportation. One small Opel Corsa here with a uh, rear wheel drive. And it's a Saab engine in this one. We can see the Holzer turbo. Hood is open on the Corsa here. And we can see the Saab engine. It has a very big turbo, looks like a truck turbo, how's it? Homemade manifold and uh, yeah. the intake manifold looks like a modified Saab one. With a throttle body on top there, double blow off valves. And the front uh, frame rails is cut off here. Make more room for the coolers, oil coolers, intercooler, everything in the front. Also some Volvo rims here. It's like in a Volvo 240 rear axle. Yeah, and here we can see the subwoofer as well. We have another road here with uh, a lot of business here uh, under the hood or uh, yeah, outside the hood or what you should say. Uh, twin turbo, some nice fabrication, polished pipes with uh, Wiggins uh, clamps. I like that. Looks like uh, many sensors for yeah, logging. They have the exhaust temp sensor. This block uh, was a little bit interesting. It is a uh, pipe going from the exhaust, so it's the exhaust back pressure. But to keep it a little bit cooler, here they have a block bolted to the head. And uh, there one pressure sensor. Some water block there. Also a pressure sensor there directly on the oil pressure. Interesting. Also these are good uh, fire suppression system, if there will be fire. We have some oil coolers and some adjustable dampers here. The interior of these ones are really small and uh, pretty big transmission tunnel here. I think both pedals are yeah, very much to the left. But they managed to drive it on the street and uh, it's sweet as well. So yeah, good job. Fiberglass body and some panels with some switches in the roof there. 
this Volvo 740, I have to do in correction because uh, in the 2019 Street Week video, I said it was a uh, BMW six-cylinder engine, but at that time and also now it is a Volvo six-cylinder engine in this one. Big nice plenum here. Aluminum Volvo six-cylinder. Very clean engine bay, very clean build with this one from Dennis Modig. And the car is looking very clean as well. Have some hosiers there, roll cage, and the cup holder and the roll cage. Very good for the transportation. Looks like in manual transmission. This BMW 5 Series M5 uh, is actually not the car the driver was supposed to drive. Uh, it's a friend of his who lent this to him because the Volvo 240 was going to drive and was not finished. So, yeah, turbo one, S38 engine. Stock intake here with um, the separate throttle bodies. <laughs> and the turbo here. It's always tight with the turbo systems on the BMWs on the with the engine laying to the side. I'm pretty stock looking these cars from the outside. Sunburnt Lincoln here with a uh, Ford Cobra engine. And of course, a single turbo for some extra power. <laughs> <laughs> Without uh, the drag racing tires, I would say this is a sleeper as well. Here we have a Mazda RX-4 with a rotor engine. The only rotor engine of uh, this uh, race. I think it's a 13B in this one. Don't know much about rotors at all, but uh, would be nice to learn. Four injectors. And we have an uh, Boy Warner turbo with a wastegate for easy manual adjustments there. Nice paint, some bugs from the road trip. Very good looking this one. Tow hook there. We have a fuel cell back here, aluminum. Some fuel pumps looking like uh, Bosch C044s. Here, sir, quick times E85 looks like a manual gearbox, some auto meter instruments, boost gauge, and switches there. Some nitrous looks like also, yeah, looking very good in the interior. In this one, it's about 600 horsepower in this one, and 1.5 bar boost it will hold up very good for this um, week trip. We have the owner here. He bought this car 87, and last time he drove here at Mantor Park drag strip was 96, I think. So yeah, it's a kind of revival. Built everything by himself. They drive the car in the exact same condition on the street as on the do on the drag strip. The only thing is a little bit lower pressure in the rear tires. Um, the owner and uh, the wife 
is going in the car. We have the electrical system and then Maxi CU system. Before it was uh, carburetors in this car, so much more better adjustability and the engine will hold up much longer than the carburetors. There's a couple of Hondas here, one NA Civic and uh, one uh, with a um, big turbo here. Turbo is almost as big as the um, cylinder head. Big one, it has a um, sequential gearbox. Magnus intake manifold. So yeah, some front wheel drives in the import war. Metal guard for the intercooler. Still the street tires on for transportation. The slicks is going on. And yeah, maybe some extra fenders there as well. missing many of the four-wheel drive Audis this year. Usually it's a couple of them and I think uh, there were several buildings but they had problems just before. It's only the black S4 I've seen so far. Here's another sleeper car, this BMW. I think it's about 1000 horsepower in it. Even interior looking really stock. Slicks is on and we all know that the BMW six-cylinder engines is very good to turbocharge and possible to get a lot of horsepower. But in this one it's the Mercedes engine, six cylinder one. A little special in the BMW. Pretty decent sized turbo there. And for the crankcase ventilation, Boxster, I think he took uh, his mother's uh, garden hose. Very good. Three series, BMW compact, roll cage, looks like an American automatic gearbox and the turbo almost fits under the hood. And Bory Warner and an M50 engine here. Yeah, some P65 coils, and some nitrous here as well, some fogger and nozzle there. And the stock uh, plastic intake manifold holding up for the boost. The reason some hoods is closed and I think it's a little bit boring but a little bit cool is this um, sealed hood challenge. The fastest car this week that do not open the hood wins that challenge. The front hood is off here, the beach boogie. We have the battery in front and some electrical system. Boogie have made it all week. E109, 109 octane. The boost from the turbo here, 2.5 bars, and uh, it was 6.29 last pass, and uh, the clutch was slipping, so hopefully faster now. They are number two in the import war category. 6.24 is the best time so far, and they had a little bit of um, heat problem. It has been very hot in Sweden this week. Today it's a little bit cloudy, so better weather today. Another Dodge Ram, and this one has a compound turbo. One turbo here, one a little bigger under there. Old um, Corolla. KA70 with an Volvo 5 cylinder B520 it says here 2 liter I'm not sure if it's 2 liter anymore decent sized turbo here Ku 
cool looking uh, RX-7 and I think this is more like a drift build than a drag racing car. It has radiator and uh, fuel system, even a little pressure gauge there on the surge tank. Interesting location for the radiators. This 88 year uh, Civic, four wheel drive. It has a race seat and instrumentation looking interesting here. Going all the way to 9000. It's actually an S2000 Honda instrumentation there, but looks really good and stock there. The engine, you can see a turbo, and it is an K24, 2.4 liter engine. Much bigger than the stock uh, 1.4 maybe. It has some uh, aftermarket parts and the intake is stock, I see, with some welded on surge tank with built-in fuel pressure regulator. That's a smart thing. Connector there also for the pump inside. It's a really cool build. He was reserved for this race and uh, three weeks before the race he was told he can attend. And uh, yeah, I don't think he had a gl clutch or turbo at that time and uh, it's um, 620 horsepower in this one and a little bit mo more boost now so maybe 650 horsepower he was second in the four-wheel drive category
have the S4 here and um, they had a little problem. Rear differential broke in two pieces. Well, the differential there. But the good thing, they had a spare diff, so putting up the new one in there now. Yeah, these guys are prepared. Gearbox, drive shafts, rear diff, another diff, drive shafts, alternators. Yeah, the Audi guys know it. Need to have the spare parts to survive an event like this. It's a heavy car, the S4 also, with full interior, uh, compared to many other drag S2s. interior of the Ames Pacer. It's a 454 engine in this one with a carburetor. Transam, serious turbo setup when um, the outlet is in the front of the front wheel. It's a twin turbo and it has the water in the coolers, two of them in the front here. I think this is the radiator and maybe a cooler in the front here that cools the intercooler water. I guess so. No owner here to ask. Pontiac Transam. LSX engine and the boost controller, the Mac valve, connected directly to uh, the wastegate. Yeah, I've never seen that. That's smart, maybe. If it uh, doesn't get too hot there. I don't know. Angry Camaro with a big blower. One of the cars that did not make it all the way to the finish is this Opel Cadet. It's on the trailer here. And the engine is an BMW M50. Also some nice car here at the parking lot. RS2, 